Yeah. Well, we are well, back. We are, we are back. live we are this live week this with Live and Mom. Live and we, have we have a special guest, guest of Sherry of Sherry Yen, Yen, uh, Mall uh, of USA, Mall USA, USA and Charles Silver Holland. So, everybody, please, please give her, give a, her a, a warm welcome. And, yeah. all, right. all right. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, so, you guys, for having yeah. me on. Thank you for Thank joining you us. For joining us. Yeah. Um, give us a, 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 a brief, uh, you know, just a little brief history about yourself. What what got you into cars? Where you, you know, where you came from? What brought you into cars? Where you came from? What brought you into cars and whatnot? Um, well, I was living out in California, and um, I, I was actually working at a speedometer shop, and a friend of mine knew that I wanted to leave the speedometer shop and do something a little more uh, broad. And he said, you should work for Chip Foose. And I said, well, who's that? I had never heard of it before. And uh, so he explained to me a little bit about what they did down there at Oberholland. And I said, okay. So I went and um, they make you build your first car for free to see if you want to build cars or you want to be on TV. And by the end of the first day, they said they'd keep me for the week. And then by the end of three days, they asked if I wanted to stay for that season. And 15 years later, I guess, or something, I, I think I started in like 2004 or 2005. And and um, and I've just been doing it ever since. Um, so, you know, off and on, sometimes it'll go off and then they'd start a new season and stuff like that. And um, so I built probably 75 cars with Overholland and uh, did my last one about uh, last year in January. They asked me to come out and I built five cars with them. And uh, yeah, that was my experience with Overholland. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Well, and well, tonight, the main tonight, reason, the main that, reason uh, that, uh, we had asked we had to asked you to join us, us uh, as, you know, people in the mob know, um, I, do um, I do have a Facebook page, page uh, it's called The Tri-5, uh, it's called the Tri-5. Um, and Sherry um, had shared a link, shared a link to, to the Mallwood USA, Mallwood USA um, um, clutch pedal setup clutch pedal for Tri-5 Chevys, and I kind of jokingly said, you know, hey, Craig, should I charge her for advertising? Kind of gone from there, you know. We kind of messed back, back, back and forth, and, and, and I asked, uh, you know, I asked Sherry to, asked Sherry to join us, us. And, um, that and that was kind of even before I knew she had been a member, or paid attention, or paid attention to the fact that she had been a member of Overhauling. Uh, overhauling. Um, um, so you know, so, I, you know, I from years ago, from years ago, you know, watched it, but it's been years since I've watched the show. So you know, you know, as as we get older, as we get older, we forget things. So. This week, this uh, week, what my, uh, hope, what is my is hope is, is to, to talk, talk with Sherry, with Sherry um, um, about, uh, about your clutch, uh, your pedal, clutch setup. pedal setup. And, uh, and uh, then, uh, then Craig has got, Craig a, few got a few questions as far as, uh, far as uh, you know, the overhaul you know, TV, TV show. Um, um, and I know, um, and I know um, everybody, I, everybody I, uh, we have uh, Sherry, we have Sherry in Joey's spot, Joey's on, the spot screen on the screen because we were having difficulties. So Joey is kind of here. Craig and I are here. So we'll kind of just have to relay what Joey does or doesn't say. Um, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll go from there. Because uh, Joey will, probably, Joey have will probably have some questions well. as well. So, um, so um, anyways, um, anyways um, let's start let's out with, start out uh, with uh, uh, questions, you know, about, questions the, about the... Uh, um, the clutch setup the clutch that you have, that you uh, have uh, what are the benefits of this pedal over other hydraulic pedals? Well, I actually have one right here. It's, this is the one for the 57. Okay. And uh, okay. So the, the genius thing about our pedal is that we have the master cylinder right there on the pedal. So if you get one of our pedals, this is what you'll get. And you just install that with a, with a new shaft. You'll put this shaft through your, your old brake pedal and you use our new clutch pedal. And uh, that's it right there. And oh. that's why, so the other kits that are on the market, um, they make you drill through your firewall. Uh, they have, they have linkage set up and just like a, um, uh, pole cable clutch, like your old clutches, mm -hmm. all that linkage can fail and needs adjusted. And sometimes, um, one of the, one of the issues is they, uh, most of those kits, they'll use the, um, existing hole that's on your clutch pedal, uh, Correct. that was, Correct. you know, hooked into your cable, to your old cable clutch. And, uh, those are not located in the correct position sometimes they're not optimal you know so 
um, it, it can be okay, it can be great, or it can be not so great. And either way, um, every time you have a pivot point, so you go out through the firewall, then you got a pivot point there, and then you got a pivot point uh, down through the linkage, that's where your clutch, uh, the, the, the cables and the lines and whatever they have, all the linkage hooked up, can fail. Um, those things get uh, wiggly or soft and they fail. And uh, ours doesn't do that. It's just a, a line down to your hydraulic throwout bearing. Okay. And with the okay. with the the old uh, you know an old pole cable clutch, the other issue with those is the fork when it hits that bearing, it doesn't always hit it. It, it well it can't really hit it flush because it's just a, it's just a fork hitting the bearing. When you have a hydraulic system, that's a exactly smooth uh, pressure on all sides of the bearing all at once. Okay. So it okay. just goes straight back and forth. You know, it doesn't wear out like a pull cable clutch would do, and it doesn't get all wonky and have a lot of play. So those are some of the benefits. Okay. I could go on okay. and on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, can you bring, can you bring your, phone your phone a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit towards, little bit towards you, you, um, you? Because, because we're getting, we're feedback, getting on feedback on the computer. computer. Oh, okay. People are saying. People are saying. So sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, high tech. High tech. Yeah, I'm not very high tech. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's um, neither is Dan. Dan. Neither am I. Yeah, I... <laughs> um, okay, so um, you kind of touched um, already touched, touched on already the second question, which was, question, you know, what are the benefits, benefits in, of the hydraulic over the mechanical? Over the mechanical. Um, um, now, with now, the, uh, the uh, mechanical, mechanical setups, setups um, uh, you know, like, you know, like over the, over um, the um, uh, uh, Instead of the Instead cable of the pipes, cable where it's pipe, all it's still all bell still tank, tank and, uh, and you know uh, rods and, and whatnot, whatnot. Uh, what exactly, uh, what are, exactly the are the benefits, benefits uh, on, on there? Of the what? Uh, you know, like uh, the you know, like, like the, in the fifty five like Chevy originally usually usually has, has um, uh, the, bell uh, the bell crank and the and mechanical, mechanical rods. And rods, rods and what's, the what's the benefits of that one over that? That's just I mean that's just kind of what I was saying about the linkage. Like you don't have linkage. Uh, with a hydraulic setup. Okay. So there's okay. nothing to wear out, nothing to get uh, wobbly. The parts aren't going to break. You know, it's just a hydraulic fluid going down through the braided line, and it, it kind of simplifies everything. And the pedal feel. Um, you know, the you can see I can push this pedal with my hand. You know, it's got a really soft pedal. Um, the feel of it is just going to be smooth. It's going to be like butter. It's going to be like the best butter. feeling pedal. Okay. Like butter. Okay. Um, so then um, on my my next question on that, um, you know, how does this work? You know, we kind of did, you kind of touched on it a little bit there. Um, the really stiff uh, street clutches where, you know, it's like a 3,000 pound, you know, clutch disc, you know, with uh, mechanical weights, you know, like a center force or whatnot. How, you know, does that kind of make it a more soft feel than like mechanical linkage? Yeah, it'll be smoother and softer. Um, the, it's, it's, it's like a, it's a really light pedal. It's really nice. The, the, usually it's between 1800 and 2500. And, um, you know, mo most people don't use the 3000, 3000 or 3500. That's going to be. Uh, a little bit crazy. I mean, it had to be, we've never run into anybody who's using that. And, um, and if we do, we have a five eighths inch master, like this master, this master is a three quarter. And, um, and we do have a five ace that we can put on and that'll handle all that, um, that, that stronger pressure or whatever. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. That we haven't had to yet. I think that's a crazy crazy kind of out there okay um so now does this react as quickly as a mechanical linkage um or does it kind of does it act quicker because the the general thought like for drag racers like me um is the mechanical linkage it it reacts quicker um the mechanical linkage in our plot process a mechanical linkage reacts quicker than hydraulics, you know, for the hydraulic having to flow back in. Does this have a large volume reservoir for, you know, and whatnot, or is it, you know? And, and I think that's kind of uh, debatable. 
Uh, in fact, they did it on that show um, where the guy tests everything. Uh, Eng Engine Masters. I, maybe that was it. And um, I thought it was like Ripley's Believe It or Not or something. I don't know what kind of show it was, but but they did test it. And, and um, you know, I think that it feel like it, it seems like in your mind, like that would be it. Like you, because you have that reaction in your foot, you can feel it. But really, I think a hydraulic system is just as, it reacts just as fast. Um, I think timing's just as good. Uh, it, you know, I mean, there's a big debate about it, but I think hydraulics wins every time. And um, I don't know, I mean, try it out. <laughs> Ask some guys who are running it um, to see. I mean, yeah. I think hydraulics are just as fast. When Sherry, if I want to jump in, Dan, what when what year did uh, Malwood USA start making this uh, pedal assembly? So um, when I, I I went over to Australia and um, went to the Motor X show, and I met a guy named Malcolm Wood. Malwood okay. is his name, yeah, and yeah. so he was making these pedals, and of course he was doing it for um, all the cars over there, all the um, right hand drive stuff. Yeah, and yeah. um and so i saw it and i thought this is the best thing out there I, I asked him could i do it in america and he said yeah so i started doing them about two and a half years ago here in the u.s that's why it's malwood usa because there is malwood australia and he's been doing this um same setup for like 40 years okay. so it's been you know for 35 40 years mal's been doing it over there in australia to the holdens and all those weird cars Sure. Because oh, cool. if it would have been if, yep. if it would have been three and a half years, there probably would be one in here because we struggled putting everything together. I tried another cheaper hydraulic kit. We just couldn't get it working right. So I went back to I went back to linkage. I've gone through a couple of clutches. I figured out how to do things. And I think you guys are out of Iowa. And I'm am I right? And so I'm in Minnesota. So that so that would have been perfect because Honestly, as I look at, you know, I've seen it before, as I look at how easy it goes in and how, you know, I'm not having to drill through the firewall. I don't have to figure out the clutch pay, uh, ratio of everything. That That's what drove us nuts and we couldn't figure it out. So that's, I want to ask when it came out because I know when I was building it, I never saw anything. Uh, and I, that's one of the, the best things. Number one, you don't have to drill through the firewall. You don't have to put on any linkage or adjust it. And, um, you know, we did all the geometry for you. Like we, we do the geometry on the pedal so that it, it lands in the stock position. Like this yep. pedal will line right up with, with your, uh, your original brake pedal. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. Sorry that I didn't no, do it a year no. earlier. If you would have called me. I'm still blaming Chip Foos for not doing the car the first time. So it's okay. Don't worry about it. <laughs> pedals um i don't know what car he put it on but it was a 57 so he just used one of my pedals he hasn't said anything about it yet but um hopefully you know he'll give me some I, feedback I, I, that's absolutely, that's absolutely cool because cool. i i met chip i met chip back in about 2004 or 5 i think it was 2005 at back to the 50s he was up here doing a signing and he had a he, he had a uh you know an autograph session that was a mile long people waiting to see him and I wasn't going to sit in line. I wasn't going to get an autograph. We walked by and he looked at my daughter and he says, oh, what a cute little girl. Come here. Let me sign this for you out of nowhere. So just super nice guy. The first uh, week that I worked on the show, he like um, the camera, for some reason, the producers were saying they weren't going to, um, they weren't going to have cameras there after midnight. And he's such a good hearted guy. He said, but, but the guys are working you know, till four in the morning, why would you not have cameras there to film what they're doing? You know, that's not fair to the guys. Right. So Chip right. just stopped showing up until midnight. There you go. <laughs> so he would do it up at midnight so they'd have to stay and film Chip, you know? Oh, and yeah, it was yeah. because he thought it was unfair to us. He's just a, a really cool guy, you know, like 100%. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's, cool. That's, that's, ni that's nice to hear because that's kind of the feeling you get watching them. And then when I met them just for two seconds, it was pretty genuine. They finally started um, giving him sort of a little entourage or whatever it shows. And that's because he 
he's genuine. He wants to sit and talk to people. And if someone says hello to him, he's going to say hello. So they had somebody come to pull him away so that, you know, because otherwise he'll just stay all, you know, he has appointments. He doesn't care. He's like, this guy oh. will stop to talk to me and he's good. Very, very, very yeah. cool. Very, very humble guy. He really is. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like working with him over these years. Um, I just came in as a, a hardworking, like shade tree mechanic. You know, I didn't go to some fancy school or anything. I just built cars in my own driveway. And so, you know, Chip would come over and he'd say, what are you doing? I'd tell him and he'd say, well, how are you going to do it? So I'd explain, well, I'm going to do it like this. And he'd say, well, what if you did this? And he'd, he'd have some idea, but he was super sweet about saying it. He never made you feel bad. He just said, oh, I've got an idea, you know? And, you know, it was probably the way you were supposed to, <laughs> to do things all along. And I just didn't know, but he never made you feel bad. He always, you know, would help you. And I learned seriously so much from that guy. He, you know, He's he's a, a good teacher, a good friend, all around good guy. Oh, that's cool. I guess I'm sure you did a lot of stuff or did you specialize in certain areas and, and what did you like? Well, my favorite thing is welding and um, I I'm I can weld. I always say I can weld. <laughs> because I'm not a great welder, um, but I just love it. Like I would sit there and just weld till four in the morning and and, uh, and I loved it, but I would do floorboards and, you know, things that were hidden. I didn't, I got, for a while there when, I, when we were building every day, I did get good enough where I was doing fenders and things like that. Um, I, I like doing body work. Uh, it's very tiring, you know, but I love uh, body yeah. work. It's fun, That's it feels like art, you know. And that that's no joke. The body work, uh, yeah, that's tiring and long, <laughs> long to do. I mean, you're always sanding and blocking back and forth and, and running the 900 or the DA or, yeah. That, that's hard work. We the the last car I built was um, for we we built a car a '64 Impala for Shaquille O'Neal, and uh, that's when I went back out there last year. That thing was the worst rusty car, one of the worst we ever did. And there was so much body work, and but especially with the on things like, and I'm sure in other shops, there's like a team, a team feeling like you've got to get this done, and everybody's working together. Sandy Bondo all night, and you know you go till late in the you know wee hours of the morning, and and uh, I don't know, there's just some camaraderie to that. But, but the main thing they had to do in the show was um, wiring, and uh, I started out because I I was working at the speedometer shop, and before I joined the show, they never touch the dash; they just leave it. And then when I joined the show, they said, well, "Can you do the whole dash?" I said, "Sure." So I pull I would pull every dash out and redo the whole thing, rebuild the speedometer and all that stuff. And um, there was one. Okay, so there was this episode. There was a certain guy on there that everyone was kind of razzing and giving trouble. And he did the wiring, but he would, that's all he would do is the wiring. And we were all saying, ah, it's like, he shouldn't be taking this long. You know, we got seven days to build this car. And, and so he couldn't be there one week. He, he had, you know, he couldn't be at the show. And so I told the build manager, hey, I want to wire this car. And he said, you can't, I need you to do your job. And I said, yeah, I'll do my job. I'll do my job and I'll do the wiring. I'll get it all done. That's it. <laughs> and so I did. And no problems. The car started right up. I wired it front to back. And and when that guy came back from out of town, he said, I, I said, yeah, you know what? Wiring's a baby job. And we just, <laughs> just kidding around, you know, like we all just, you know, it was all in fun. Everybody kind of gave each other a hard time. And yeah, so from then on, I had to wire every car. And oh. so there don't play tricks on people because it will come back to bite you and then you will have to wire like 45 or 50 cars and it's not really <laughs> well that's <laughs> how i started echoed me twice because i was late and i had a hyundai and then i like wiring and what she do she rags on the wiring like, right. man, you, like Right I understand like it's kind of cathartic like you start doing the wiring and you get into it and then and then you get super excited about it I get that like it happens but <laughs> it's a lot of work 
It's a lot well, of work. Um, and okay, for me, hey, Holly, uh, I wired up a sniper a couple of times, but see, it's for me, it's really hard because I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just winging it every time I'm wiring a car and I've done so many of them. Aren't the owners so glad to know that, that I had no idea what I was doing, but I mean, you know, it's just a do, car. You do, can you, figure do, it you out. Have, do you have a favorite aftermarket, you know, kit that you like to use where it's American auto wire or quick wire or something like that? Company that we use called M and H and um, they make, a lot of the M and H is in California, and it's I don't know what a lot of people don't know about it, but um, they like there's a lot of the the kits you have to make the plugs. You know you have to stick every wire in the plug and every all the thing. The M and H comes with plugs made. It's a stock harness, so that's one thing that might be a detractor for some guys if they want to um, do some sort of upgrades or aftermarket stuff. But you can always add that on, but but I think M&H makes the best harnesses. And then um, if I'm just getting a kit, we use a lot of American Auto Wire. Yeah, cool. I've used uh, M&H quite a few times here, mm -hmm. actually, on different customer vehicles. So, so. yeah, they're they're a very nice kit. Painless is, is painless is here in Texas. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, it's in Texas. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, I like the AEW kits. And then really the Holly, I mean, that's what I, I like to do, like the unterminated harnesses. Yeah. You know, but you, you know, you have to spend money on tools. Uh, yeah. You know, the different pins and everything's, it's not just your simple, you know, go down to O'Reilly's or AutoZone and get your, you know, cheap crimpers. You know, you've got hundreds and hundreds of dollars in special crimpers. So, yeah, and you got to be a genius like you to figure it all out. Oh, okay. yeah. now, we're, now we're working ourselves back. Okay. Trying the compliments. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so we kind of so, we kind of trailed off there. Uh, I kind of just real quick before we kind of keep going on, you know, and have Craig ask a few questions about the TV show. I kind of wanted to just touch a couple more questions about the clutch setup. Um, does this work with the stock steering column, and um, is it a retrofit without removing the steering column to get the pedal assembly out? Because as you probably know, try fives um, to get the clutch pedal assembly out, you have to get the steering column out of the way. So does this retrofit, do you just have to pull the clutch shaft out and then bolt this up in the end? Yeah. Uh, you don't have to pull the carrier out. The, the You don't have to pull the bracket. We, right. we If you watch our install videos, we pulled the brackets out just so you could see what we were doing on the video. But um, but when you're installing it, you literally just like you slide the old clutch pedal out, then you slide this shaft through the brake pedal, through the clutch pedal, and then right. bolt this on with a couple of bolts. And, and that's it. Like you don't have to pull the steering column down. You don't have to pull the bracket down. You just pulled your old clutch pedal out, put the new clutch pedal on and bolt it in, and we send you uh, new little, uh, what do you call them? Bushings, Bush, you know, bushings. these little, those little bushings and the new shaft. That's it. It literally it seems like it's too simple, but it, it really is that simple. You just pull that old pedal out, put our new pedal in. So really the hardest part then is just pulling the transmission to get the hydraulic uh, throw all bearing in. That's yeah. If you want to, I mean, but if you want to go with hydraulics, that's what you got to do right. no matter what kit you use you're gonna have to pull the tranny and get that bearing in there i should have waited one more year to start the build i would have been fine start over you can start over <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to touch the transmission again i've already had it out three times not doing it again you have to pull it if you oh you don't have hydraulics that's right you nope. have to pull, sorry yeah i know i know yeah but, but get an even number yeah that's true, that's true. Just make it four times you got more, 99 problems time. over there, but uh, the clutch well, pedal ain't one. We're, we're dealing right now with, I'm dealing with Richard Owens, 55 Chevy here. He, we were doing a, he had a four speed Muncie. We're putting a TKO Tremec 600 in. And so we bought this new center force, or he bought, I didn't. <laughs> center force clutch. We did everything. And then when we realized we we're going to put, put it together, his pedal assembly is wore out. 
So in high in hindsight, now we just ordered a pedal assembly. It just came in. We've got to do some stuff to get it going. We had to fabricate a Z-bar bracket for the big block because it's different geometry, everything. And so we've had some setbacks. And when you look at going, because I think your kit is about $550, am I right? Okay. okay. So when you start okay. looking at okay. pedal assembly, the bushings, Z-bar, brackets, all of a sudden you're almost breaking even at that point because of time and effort. It's bolt and go. And so the biggest difference would have been instead of putting a clutch fork and uh, throw up bearing in, we're just simply putting in the hydraulic bearing. So yeah. what, what does, I couldn't find it on your website. What does the hydraulic bearing cost? We, so we can't get the bearings ever since that um, weird Corona thing happened. Uh, we, the bearings Malwood makes over in Australia. So we haven't been able to keep them. So we recommend like a Tilton or a McLeod because they're good bearings. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But those run, I think they run about 350. I think I, I, I yep. really haven't yep. priced them out. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, for the amount of time we've got into trying to get this one up and working, we probably would have been said and done on the first day. Done. Is it? I can do one in a half hour. If it's your first one, it might take you an hour to put it in or so. And, you know, it, around that. So, yeah, I mean, just the time and the effort and trying to figure out the geometry on everything and figure out how everything goes on the firewall, drilling your firewall. And then there's a lot of um, of our models that, um, you know, not, not the 57, but, but other you know, makes and models that we won't mention on this show. They, fine, fine. Um, there's no room for, for these new kits, for the hydraulic kits. And ours goes under the dash, so it leaves all the room on the firewall. So if, you're, if you want to save room on your firewall or you don't want to cut your firewall, this is the way to is go. It, is, the, uh, is it a machined aluminum? No, it's steel. It's, um, okay. yeah, it's steel. And um, we get them stamped out. We do everything here in Iowa, too. It's a USA company. Everything's done in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. Made, made it's better than Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's the best part. It's a step it's a step up from Wisconsin, even though we're down here. Right. Right. <laughs> are you Sherry, are you gonna make it up for back to the fifties? I probably will. Uh, when is that? Eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth of June. June. I'm gonna put it on my calendar and try. I came up a couple times. It's really fun. Oh yeah, we have a good time. So we're gonna we're, we'll be having a barbecue. We'll try to get all the mob guys that are coming to park together. So hopefully we can see you there. Come and visit you guys. If I'm up there, I'll come by. Get you some swag. I'll, swag. I'll expect barbecue and swag. That's as good as it gets, right there. We do barbecue here. Okay. This so, gets cooked a lot. So yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I can yeah, eat a lot. Good. Yeah, they're very good at that. They, <laughs> you think it'd be somebody from Texas, but it's not. <laughs> well, hey, yeah. you know, we, we make we make our own barbecue, you know, we, and, you know, real barbecue is elusive. I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, barbecue, you have to slap a piece of meat on the grill and, and it's, it's called bar, it's barbecue. But, you know, real barbecue, no, it's it's elusive, you know. Uh, out in the east, you know, pork is king and, and down in Texas, you know, uh, beef, you know, beef brisket's king, so. You know, I mean, it's it's honestly elusive. <laughs> and we got them both here in Iowa. It's pork and beef here in Iowa. That's uh, true. That, that is true. Well, since we're close to the southern border, it's pork and beans. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, let me ask you. I'm going to get back to the pedal before I forget my question. You've got the little aluminum reservoir. Um where where do people typically want to mount that firewall inside or outside? Um, I the one I did on a fifty seven, we mounted it on the bracket. We made a little bracket and we mounted it on the um, the brake master cylinder, like okay. just off the okay. side. Um, a lot of people just put them on the firewall if if you like that sort of thing. You could put it, uh, you can run it on the fender. Like on a on a newer Mustang, you'll put it on the fender right there is where it goes, you know. Okay. Um, okay. Just you can really put it wherever you want as long as it's above this master cylinder. Yep. Uh, yep. Where'd it go? Yeah. Anyway, if as long as it's above that master cylinder, 
so that it, the pressure goes down. Yep. You can put it anywhere. Well, because there's, I'm not, I'm not familiar with who sells it. I think Classic Chevy Eckler, some of they have a conversion kit that you try to do for the tri five, and they have the reservoir under the dash up in the hump of like the 55. And I go, there's no way I'm going to be able to fill that, and I don't want to take my speedometer out. Right. So, I mean, yeah, you could put it under there, and it's not like you really have to keep filling it. You, you know, it would just be. I guess over time, some could come out, but how, I don't know. I mean, it's a sealed system. Right. Um, I'm not that smart. I'm not that smart. You're um, doing good. But you could, you could, I mean, under on a Chevy, you know, on a Bel Air or whatever, there is room under there sometimes if you don't have a bunch of junk under there. I would just put, I mean, like we, we just put it on the master cylinder. It looks fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, you, that's, that's what I would rather do. Cause if you ever have to service it, flush it, do whatever, I'd rather do it outside than try to get up under my dash again. I get in the great eight, maybe, uh, maybe not. Right. right. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. If you had, if you had your choice, first of all, I got one question. There was a nineties music band that had a good hit and I want to say, was it the rentals? No, that wasn't you. That wasn't you, was it? A little yep. bit of vocals. That was the uh, yeah. I played the keyboards for that band, and um, that was one of the guys from Weezer. And he decided to quit and make his own band, and so I went with him on tour. And and if you watch our video, you'll see Maya Rudolph from Saturday Night Live. She sang backups. Okay. okay. That was before Very Saturday Night Live, and Maya Rudolph was in our band. It was pretty fun. She's actually one of the coolest people. She's super fun. It's of course really funny, and we toured for like a year. It was good. That's a that's a pretty good transition going from you know pop group, rock group, whatever, into working on cars. Waiting, and they asked me, "What do you want to do?" in the video and everybody had what they wanted to do. And I was like, I just want to drive a Mopar. That's it. <laughs> Whatever else is, you know, I don't care what else I have to do. And so, so does that, you see. That leads into my next question because obviously we're Tri-5 guys and, and that's okay because we all have other cars and like other cars. Right now, I don't know what cars you have in your stable, but if you had to close your eyes and imagine what car do you want to build on or buy next to your dream car of all time, what is it? Um, right now, well, I have a 68 GTS and I, I, right now I'm welding quarters on it. And that's exactly what I did when I, I cause I was just, I, I wanted to buy a car and build it. And I was like, what is it that I really love? Like you, you build all these different cars and, and I just went to a car show and just started looking and I thought that's the one I kept coming back to. And, um, so that's what I'm building right now. And then in the last couple of weeks, I keep seeing Mach 1s. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of cool. They're kind of cool. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's no so Bel Air. If from stuff you learned, obviously, on overhauling in your own life, what is one thing that you would say, because you're building the car, what's one thing? I don't want to ask a favorite thing yet. I'd say, what's the one thing that you would hire Don because you absolutely hate doing it? Oh, that I would hire somebody for? Uh, probably, well, upholstery and the headliner and, and not only because I hate doing it because it, it it's try, like your hands get so wasted from just like trying to run those hog green pliers and everything but um also I'm just not like you got to be really good at upholstery it has to be perfect absolutely yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. I know what you mean about the hog green pliers I've I've had to do a few of them here you know the newer stuff uh, here at the body shop that I work at uh some of them the airbags they're designed to tear out the side of the seat you know for the airbag to come out the side and you know you got to take those and get them stitched up and then you got to bring them back and you got to hog ring them together and we have an old set of hog ring pliers you know that they kind of you know like a uh, oh what's that one bugs teeth like an ant's mouth you know it, it clamps them around and oh my, my it's horrible it's horrible it hurts that it is. It, it's horrible. It's a pain in the butt. Tough guys, I guess. I, I don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs>
that's fine. I hate doing body work. I'm paying somebody to do my body work. Yeah, I, I love doing body work. I don't know. I, like, I can get it to a certain point, and then you just need somebody that can just finish it, you know? Okay, so another question then. If it's your car, what's in there? Now, you're an overhauling. Okay, this is good. Your car is getting overhauled and you got everything. What's the one thing that you need to do to it to make sure it's Cherry's way of doing it? What's the one thing you need to do on the car that nobody else should touch? Um, I need a carburetor and manual. Otherwise, there I don't want to drive it. It's got to be a manual shift and it's got to be carbureted. She beat you again, Joey. Yeah, Joey. You got the manual. <laughs> well, I used to be a local carburetor, you know. Yeah. So, uh, those snipers are pretty cool. The five, snipers five, is pretty cool. I got five tech. Yeah, I, yeah, I do more. I do more racing stuff. So oh yeah. Dominator. Yeah, I do. I, I oh do yeah. My car and, and uh, we do turbos and stuff like that. So uh, Terminator X is a good set setup. We've got to do some stuff like that. But um, it's just it's once you get used to the. The data logging and things like that, it, it really is a plus to have the electronics. But yeah, yeah. sometimes it's nothing better than just have a, you know, I ran a blow through carburetor for a long time and it, it worked fine. I guess if I was going to race, maybe I would change my mind, but for a grocery getter, I think, I, and I just don't know anything about all that stuff. I'm really not educated on it. I, I can rebuild a carburetor. And so that's what I'd pick just because I can fix it myself. But I probably should educate myself a little. <laughs> yeah, I can. You can. Uh, you can still run carburetors on on things and still run EF, EFI ECUs. You know. You oh can yeah. Still get that, so. Yeah. Uh, see, so I'm not a. Yeah. It's so you can still do it. You can, you know, not not hijack the steel, but you can get like full on flow top setups with, with carburetors on it. it. Works really well. Yeah, and but I mean. Back to you, Craig. I don't want to keep your. No, I, that's, that's what it's about. It's about just creating the conversation. So, I mean, it, it's just going to lead one way or the other because, like I said, honestly, I had some other questions that I think I've already forgot because she started off just answering questions that I had already. You know, I'm like, I'm going to ask about this. Because honestly, <laughs> like, I honestly can tell people and anybody that knows because this car sat in my dad's garage since 1979 waiting. And, and he passed away years ago, you know, 20 years, um, 16, 17, 20 years ago, whatever it is. And I got the car. So when I got the car was around 2004, which was really a good height of overhauling. And, you know, I watched, I can say I watched every show. So I have a lot of questions. Of course, I could go through, you know, Chris Jacobs, you know, we could go through everybody, Courtney Hanson, of course, you know, go through all these people that I've watched and, and seen through the years. And I, I, I imagine that there's a stressful working environment because it's a time constraint. Um, I'm sure there's things behind the camera that can't be said and, and, and whatnot. But I imagine though that the level of talent that you were around was just like an education of a four year college in like three weeks. It was, it was insanity because they would bring in, like we'd have all those volunteers in the first shows that I did. Like the first few years, sometimes we'd have like 25 volunteers. And if the three of us, or there's four of us, isn't there? If the four of us were at a shop, there'd always be something that I know or you know that the other guy doesn't know or a way to do something that someone just came up with. It was just constant learning. Everybody was, and and it, I think other TV shows, they, they're, you know, they want that drama and stuff, but we really didn't have that. It was hilarious and funny. We would laugh ourselves to death, like, it was just fun at all times and i think a lot of that is chip foos like he's just he, there's just no drama like we were just having a good time building cars and and every, you know the focus was on getting the car done because you only had seven days so um i mean that was the focus there wasn't really a lot of time for drama you're just working hard and we do like 19 hour days every day and and go hard for seven days and then you'd go sleep for three days and Right. And come right. back at it. So, that you know, always when you think of cars, so I think the seven car thing, seven days, you know, building a car. I mean, normal people would think that that's yeah. going to, you know, get done. But did y'all have like a huge variety of parts or? Yeah. Or, you know, so. Had to have like, I mean, or, or was it kind of pre-planned? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like what we're doing. I mean, kind of what we're doing. And you would have everything 
there would be no waiting for parts. I mean, yeah, everybody. So we know who is going to be on the build. You know, you'd like pick the car and then you'd get sponsors. So maybe Holly would show up, uh, Bear Breaks, uh, Summit Racing. And so that you just basically call whoever were the sponsors and say, hey, Summit Racing, send me everything you have for a Bel Air, uh, you know, and, you know, 55, whatever you were doing. And so when we started, all the parts were laid out on the table. And, um, you know, the first thing we do is tear the car apart. And then we take the frame. You could get the frame back from powder coating the next day. Like in your real life, you know, that's a four week deal, you know, right, but right. we had um, where we do them in Huntington Beach. Chip knows all those guys. He's been cars with them forever. And so, you know, we had favors and then you got 25 guys. So, you know, everything cool. goes a little faster when you. I'm going to be back in two minutes. I got my power cord is right inside the door on my phone. Everything's going to go do it. Two seconds. All right. All right. All yeah, right. So all right. it's. I mean, it's like that. You just, you know, everybody just kind of pitches in. It's fun. You're going all night. And, you know, when you're working with somebody till four in the morning every night, you just, there's a camaraderie there. You know, people become your good friends. And um, it got to be insane because cool. I'd make 25 new best friends every week. And eventually you just can't well, even remember anybody anymore. It's like 25 new dudes gonna, a week. And I was going to die in about two seconds. <laughs> You know, I, I think that's, you know, a lot of times, you know, in this, in this, this thing that we like, you know, with the car stuff, I think that's the, the best thing about it is the camaraderie, Yeah. you know, with that. I mean, you know, whether, you know, like I have friends that we race and, you know, we just want to, you know, we're competitive, but we also want to, you know, the other car, other guys car to have a good day and, yeah. you know, and it's late nights and, oh man, I got to, you know, we got to pull the motor out. I got to put a piston in or whatever it is. And, you know, you just do it, you know, and I see that a lot with this group is, you know, people helping. And I think that's where people really, man, it's just nice to have, you know, quality friends and, you know, things like that where you can, where you can do it. I mean, that's just what makes the friendships last. It's not, it's about cars, but it's also about, you know, friendships uh, along the way too. Yeah, it is. And everybody, I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk when it comes to females in the industry and all that. I never had issues. I mean, there were issues with m more with like the production team and things like that. But right. you right. know, those first years it was like nobody ever even thought, you know, had a second thought about it because I just went to work. I didn't, you know, mess around and and it, that's what it was like. It was it was just like everybody came in to get a certain job done and and guys would show up new and and not understand what we were doing because I, I remember in my first week I you know they'd give me a job and I said well this I've never done tv or anything like how are we are we doing this so that it looks good or how are we doing it and and Chip said you do this like it's your car and I said oh okay good that you know that's much easier because it's going to be freaking perfect you know or as good as I can do it you know and that's that's how we did everything and that was where everybody aimed for and it just, uh, you know, you kind of weeded out the guys who weren't uh, striving to be perfect. And you ended up with this great group that ended up, there was 10 of us that worked together on the A team for a while that were just, it was, we had it, we had it down where we were finishing cars in five days. Wow. Wow. That's, that's interesting. You know, that, that yeah, uh, good guys. That, that, that close -knit group. Yeah. That, that's uh, the biggest thing that I've, I've learned, you know, working with different people here. Um, and, you know, it's gotten down to where it's just me and my dad working here. But the, the biggest thing that I've learned as far as working with people is if, if you're not here to help me and I'm not here to help you make, you know, the job easier, then, you know, why are, why are we here or why are you here? If you're, if you're not here to, you know, make the job easier per se, you know, each person has a task or each person does one thing, you know, getting through everything. You're right. I mean, it can, and, and some guys are just like that. They're, they're out for themselves and they didn't, they didn't make it very long there, you know, and I'm sure the same as your, at your shop, you know, if somebody's there, not there to, to get the job done and to make right. a really nice right. car, 
what's the point, you know? I mean, that's the that's the ultimate goal, and then you try to have fun along the way. Right, Did most you... definitely. You know, that's that's the way you kind of got to have it work is, you know, working ultimately to the same goal. Right. When you were working, how much, how much, uh, how many times, or was there any times when the camera just got annoying because it was in your face and you were trying to concentrate? <laughs> uh, not so, they, the camera guys were super pros. They, they were fine. And, and, you know, I think because we had the hosts like AJ and Courtney, they took that pressure off. You know, it's like they were the ones who had to do the most of the talking. They'd just come up and they'd say, what are you doing? And then I, you know, they just got to tell them, well, I'm installing the air conditioner. And, and then you figure out if you say something funny that you'll probably get on TV and then your mom could see you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, and so you say something funny or whatever. And, you know, and so it wasn't really, the only thing that I didn't like is they filmed you 24 hours a day. So, you know, I, I'm a girl and I would sometimes see myself walking across the shop all hunchback or something, you know, <laughs> and I'd be like, I'll oh, stand up straight, you know, and you, you don't think about you're on camera all the time, you know? Right. They're, right. Yeah. Right. Right. I know what I was going to tell you because somebody was making fun of my photo that you guys put up for the promo. That oh, yeah. Put up. I, I seen that on uh, another, that was on another page outside of the Tri-5 month that I had kind of shared that too and posted it, so... I wouldn't get too worried about that. Most of the guys here in the Tri Five Mob were uh, pretty pretty respectful on their comments. But that was uh, a friend of mine was over. She was practicing her photography. She was a good photographer, and she um, she was like, "Here, lean over the lean over the engine and do something." And I was like, it, I, "It's done." And so I just took a screwdriver and held it like that back <laughs> on the distributor. So I was just like mucking around and some guy was i was like yeah he's right i wasn't doing shit <laughs> i was doing nothing <laughs> i used to do it i used to go up on overhaul when i'd see you know chip and chris would be talking about something in front of the car and i'd just go up to the car with like a can opener or something stupid you know a banana and i'd just be behind him like this you'll see like and <laughs> <laughs> just doing just to get on camera because it's funny <laughs> no that's funny i had some funny story so we've got a guy that on his race cars, he'll always he'll put something that just doesn't fit. Like he'll put a fishing bobber like on the spring of the return spring on the car. Yeah. I mean he'll do something odd like when people will go by and look at it and go, What is what that? The? You know, but I mean that's what he wants. He wants that that shock of that. So yeah. Like, oh, you're not doing it. that's not doing anything to this car and it's like you're absolutely right, it's not, but it makes catch your attention. <laughs> and uh, there's another guy, he's on T V, he actually has a, ke a, a bottle of beer and it's glued to the back of the wing on his on his truck and so and it's, and it goes people like he'll start doing a burnout and people are like oh, they'll be pointing at it or sometimes <laughs> they'll try to grab a hold of it they think somebody left the beer on the back on the back of the truck and it's just it's there permanently as a fixture it's pretty funny right mike curtis had a uh, he had a 29 roadster and a little pickup and and I mean, that wasn't a roaster, it was just a little pickup, but he had a, the overflow was a Jack Daniels bottle. And that always got all the attention. Oh, Jack Daniels bottle for the overflow. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, interesting, interesting question we had here in the, in the mob here as it's going out live in the mob. Um, someone says, you know, he says, I know the host. Uh, Chip is the host, but has he ever changed his idea on the build after someone suggested something? You know, just curious. Yeah, tons. Yeah. Um, I don't remember specifically, but um, he he'd always take our suggestions and and then especially the suggestions of like the the you know there was the mark and then the insider and so the person who brought the car would make suggestions and say, you know, I don't think my husband or my whoever it was, you know, I don't think he would like this or that. And Chip would change it. He he was pretty open, you know. And uh, yeah, he's just, I mean, he's just cool. He's just, I mean, literally you'd forget that it's him. If you were there building, it, he's just like one of the guys. So yeah, he, he takes suggestions. He changes things if someone wants to you know i mean but he definitely has a vision for what he's doing and he's gonna get it to look how he wants it 
he does a great job. He, you know, there, I figured out that we have very different taste. So they would send like two sets of pedals or two steering wheels mm -hmm. and, you know, for him to pick from. And I always knew which one he wanted because it was one I didn't like. And I'd always tell him that. I'm like, I figured you're going to use these pedals. He's like, yeah, they're awesome. I said, no, they're not. <laughs> 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 but, oh, um, oh. yeah but uh, you know but like one time he did uh he painted it was for tony todd's car and he it was a convertible what was that a cutlass i think anyway it had a white paint scheme like a pearl paint scheme and then he took palm fronds off a tree put them on the hood and then painted over them with some purple and I just thought, what are you doing? This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And and it turned out amazing. And it's one of the right. coolest cars ever. Just put well, it, plants to, on over these plants. Like who would have thought of that? Yeah, well to have to have the you know, the vision to see, you know, see in your head of how it's gonna work and how it's gonna lay out, you know, that's that's something, you know, I've I've tried to do that, you know, like when I've done some claims on some different cars or whatever. I can see it in my head how it's going to lay out, and how it's gonna work, but you know, until it lays down, you know, I have my vision of what I want. But sometimes it doesn't always work, and sometimes it does. You know, it's you know the vision to see what's what's going to happen or try something new. new. Yeah. Yeah, you, have, I guess I have the vision. <laughs> have, have you ever sprayed a car? Got to the point where they let you paint the car. Yeah, not on overhauling, but um, Exalta paint. I was at SEMA, and um, they had me paint car at SEMA. And there was like four of us that were just just to show, oh, the you know, because the, they they wanted people who had never painted a car. And I was like, well, I painted a, a bike, like, but never a car. So anyway, we got to spray this paint to show that oh, anybody could use this paint. Right. Right. Even someone who doesn't know. Somebody and, uh, from somebody from Iowa. from Iowa. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> oh, very cool. Oh, these are some these are some really good stories. It's nice to hear very personal and it's nice to hear you have, you have such great experiences. Thanks, man. I like I like talking to you guys. I might come back every week and you'll be like, you know what? We didn't invite you this week. You know what we would say to that? Do you honestly know what we would say? Bye, Joey. <laughs> oh, of course, of course, you know. Oh, well, uh, yeah, it's been great to get to talk to you, get to, you know, hear some of the stories and, and hear about your product. Um, you know, your product is the main reason that we wanted to, you know, interview you and get to hear about uh, overhauling. Um, that, uh, you know, is a plus, you know, and we, we really appreciate you taking your time, you know, to, to talk to us and, and you know, answer our questions, um, you know, and if, if you have something, you know, that's a new product, you know, that's related to Tri Fives, you know, in the Mallwood line, um, you know, feel free to get a hold of me and let us know about it because we would love to share, you know, anything that's Tri Five related. Cool. Thank you. Well, I've got the, all three you all three years covered, and um, and it's pretty much what we're sticking to is just the the clutch pedal kit. And you can um, find it at MalwoodUSA.com or just follow me on Facebook and you'll see it posted there all the time. And uh, yeah, well, and I just I, wanted to I, tell you that since I'm your first guest, then I get to come back on the 100th episode, okay? 100th episode, okay. We can, this, this even be, if you guys are big wild. time. We can definitely. Maybe we should have her back sooner. We could like talk about like the RPM Act and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, maybe we could do that. Uh, yeah, I think we, that, um, the if if you don't know what it is, look on my Facebook. I have it posted on there, and you need to send a letter to your representatives and and let them know because that's going to wreck our industry. So we need to get involved with that. I know politics are boring, but but look on my Facebook page. It's posted there. You guys can post it on your Facebook page. I'll share the link with you. Okay. For that RPM okay. Act, it's it 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 will be a nightmare. So I, I have I have one question. Um, Terry Kennedy, guy in the mob, he's got a beautiful uh, patinaed, we'll call it '57 wagon. Um, he says he's he wants to use your setup in his '57, and he's going to use a T56 transmission. 
does your center shifter work on a T56? And also, do you have the interior parts to convert the T56 from the rear shifter to the center? Um, we, I can probably get that. That's from Malwood uh, in Australia. Okay. So we, we did carry them, we put them in our line, and now we just can't, some this stupid Corona thing, we can't keep stock on the shifters and the bearings. Um, but uh, shoot me a, a private message and I'll, and I'll see if I can get one from Mal from Australia. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, he's, yeah, Terry's a good guy, and he's going to be at the Tri-5 Nationals, which, by the way, are in Bowling Green. You should go to that one also. Joey and I are going to be roommates, so, you know. Uh, unfortunately, I won't, I won't make it this year. I, I was going to make it last year, but due to corona and everything and, and now how things are kind of falling at home, you know, it's just didn't work out for me to go this year. So, um, you know, I won't be there, but uh, – <laughs> hey, that that would work if they would let me transfer my entry and and you had a, a drag car 55 that you want to go drag race. I would surely let you use my entry. My entry. All right, I'm I'm gonna plan it. Sweet. Sweet. No, but it. <laughs> let her take well, your car. Well, hey, she, she drives hey, better she than wants, all three of us. If she wants to take my car, I mean, they say they say women usually are better on the tree, so. Um, do you want me to leave the 355 in it, or do you want the 700 horse uh, 406 in it? 406. Okay. Go big uh, or go home, right? It's an nice right. Starter. Go big or go home. Yeah. Go home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 then we'll put you in a twin turbo car. Hey, all right. <laughs> Joy, see, okay, so let's <laughs> let's. You got to start paying it as you pay attention. If you're on all the the pages. You'll start to see Joey's uh, car, the Gold Digger, just coming fresh out of paint. Twin turbo. It's going to be running like a 4.2, you know. It's right where it's going to be running. It, Joey, let's, 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 I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to build you up here, man. I'm not lost. It won't be that bad. It'll be a four-second car, but it won't be that bad. I was on, I was on Instagram. I was going to try to get him and Murder Nova's 55. Uh, Sean's 55, but then Sean wrecked the Sean's dad wrecked the 55, so that's not going to happen. So, yeah, so yeah, because Sean, Sean, I what's his name, Ellington, Ellington, I can't Sean remember. Sean Ellington, yeah, yeah, Ellington. He has a 55 that he just was. It was his first race car, and he just brought it back, and he was getting it going. So I was going to start some little you know, drop little lines on Instagram. Yeah, but you haven't raced the gold digger yet because it'd be kind of fun to get a little tri five action going. But then he ended up wrecking, so it's not going to happen yet. That's okay. Well, when you come up for the 50s, look for the guys with the tri fives in the blue car and stop by and say hi, and we'll have some barbecue. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. Well, this week's episode, uh, I... Again, I uh, before I go, I want to especially thank uh, Sherry for joining us this week, uh, being our special guest, giving us an interview. We've had some technical difficulties, and I've had to kind of work through them this week. Um, and uh, you know, sorry we couldn't see Joey in the background, but uh, we're we're making the best and doing what we could. Um, so, but we could still kind of hear Joey through Sherry's mic, so that's all good. Um, so anyways, with this week, uh, I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. And I appreciate everybody that has been here and watched. And everybody that is does make it to the end in on YouTube, uh, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Um, that's how we grow the channel. So please make sure to do that. I appreciate it. And here, here's a... Hang on, hang on, Joey. Okay, hang on, Joey. Hang say, on, Joey. say that again, Joey. Say that again, Joey. Say that again, Joey. I said no. Thank you, <laughs> thank you to Daniel for doing such a bang up job, and then we wouldn't have Sherry as our guest if it wasn't for y'all's connection. So uh, we really appreciate that, and it's all good. Rock star. Rock star. Sherry's a rock star. Sherry's a rock star. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for being here, and we. Okay.